got the job because he was a defensive coordinator that they thought could get the job done. So if he's not doing it, it's time to move in a different direction. I think he go, should go back in Division Three football where he belongs. So we're clear. So you don't have to ask that again. Over the last three seasons, the Los Angeles Chargers have had what seems to be the pieces needed to be a contending NFL team. Justin Herbert is a young quarterback who's played with uber talented skill position players like Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams. They've boasted some of the best defensive players in the league like Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, and Derwin James. And while the LA Chargers have either been in the playoffs or at least playoff contention over the last two seasons, this year, they have lagged behind because of what has plagued them over and over again. Their inability to hold on or win close games. Head coach Brandon Staley's seat has been red hot to the point where he might not even have a coaching seat at all by the end of the year. Rumors are running rampant as to who would be the perfect head coach to lead the Chargers to the promised land. To this point, there has been no evidence that the Chargers will ever break their trend of heartbreaking finishes, which is why it's clear that Brandon Staley needs to go for the Chargers playoff hopes do. Now before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Three years ago, the LA Chargers hired Brandon Staley away from the rival LA Rams to be their new head coach. As a first year defensive coordinator, Staley helped lead the Rams to the league's best defense in terms of scoring, total defense, and pass defense. He had spent the previous three seasons coaching linebackers for the Bears and Broncos before making the jump to defensive coordinator. And while he had spent time with offensive minded coaches like Matt Nagy and Sean McVay, the Chargers hired Staley to pair a strong defense with their young emerging offense. Justin Herbert was coming off of a historic first season during which he essentially rewrote the rookie record books on his way to winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. The Chargers had the potential to be the envy of the NFL as they aimed to contend with an elite quarterback playing on a rookie scale contract. And the reason why they fired their previous coach, Anthony Lynn, was primarily due to his inability to manage games and losing very close games. Now, the Brandon Staley era started off really strong as the Chargers won four of their first five games. However, there were some concerning results that flattened the LA Chargers record that season. There was a week eight loss to the New England Patriots when Justin Herbert threw a pick six to lose a fourth quarter lead before losing the game. In week 15, they led by a touchdown with less than three minutes left against the Kansas City Chiefs before allowing a fourth quarter rally that turned into an overtime loss. The next week, they gave up 24 fourth quarter points as they lost to a bad Texans team, dealing a serious blow to their playoff hopes. That set up a massive season finale against the Las Vegas Raiders and Staley's first major inflection point with the Chargers. The winner would make the playoffs while the loser would go home. However, if the game ended in a tie, both teams would make the playoffs. That set up the possibility of both teams kneeling the ball for the whole game in order to clinch a playoff spot for both teams. Unfortunately for fans of this hypothetical, both teams did try to win with unique stakes and made for one of the wildest games in NFL history. The Chargers season appeared dead as they trailed by 15 points with just over eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. But LA rallied scoring a touchdown with the two point conversion, forced a three and out before a touchdown pass to Mike Williams on the last play of regulation sent the game into overtime. Each team traded field goals to begin overtime before the Raiders got the ball back with four and a half minutes left. After getting past midfield, it looked like the Raiders drive had been stalled and they seemed content to run the clock out and take the tie. But Brandon Staley called timeout with 38 seconds left, puzzling everyone on the broadcast, which at the time would say this. Mm. What? Mm, 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 mm. I'm trying to process this myself. I, 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 wow. And as an act of revenge, the Raiders would run another play with Josh Jacobs gaining 10 yards to get into field goal range before kicking the game-winning field goal to send the Chargers home. When Brandon Staley was asked after the game why he called the timeout that essentially cost the Chargers their season, he said this. Did to get in the right grouping. We felt like they were going to run the ball, so we wanted to get our best 11 personnel run defense in. Um, make that substitution so that we could, you know, get a play where we would deepen the field goal. LA would finish.
finish Brandon Staley's first season 9-8, and eight, but losing the finale prevented the season from being labeled a success. But going into the offseason, the LA Chargers would make significant changes to their defense, trading a 2022 second round pick and a 2023 sixth round pick to the Chicago Bears in return for Khalil Mack. Pairing Khalil Mack, who was arguably the best edge rusher of the past five years in the NFL, with Joey Bosa, which would give the Chargers one of the top pass rushing duos in the league. The Chargers began the season as a mixed bag. They exacted revenge on the Raiders to begin the season, but collapsed against the Kansas City Chiefs yet again in week two. They had a strong October and early November before running into more late game trouble. They went scoreless in the second half against the San Francisco 49ers and lost after leading in the fourth quarter. The next week, they lost again after leading in the fourth quarter once again to the Kansas City Chiefs. These losses dropped the Chargers to five and five, and while they mostly stabilized their season for the rest of the way, these games showed that LA wasn't quite on the level of the true contenders. The Chargers earned the first wild card spot at 10-7, setting up a road matchup with the AFC South champion Jacksonville Jaguars and the second inflection point during Brandon Staley's tenure. The Chargers had about as good of a first half as anyone could have asked for, jumping out to a 27-0 lead. It went into halftime 27-7 thanks to five takeaways, including four interceptions and an opportunistic offense playing with good field position. The second half was a different story. On offense, the Chargers only had four drives. Two ended in quick punts. The other two ended in field goal attempts, which included one miss. Meanwhile, Jacksonville scored on all four of their second half drives. The Jaguars scored a touchdown on their first three drives of the half before kicking the game-winning field goal as the clock expired to win 31-30 and send the LA Chargers home. It was the third largest comeback in NFL playoff history, and the collapse also marked the first time in the playoffs a team lost while winning the turnover battle by five. Brandon Staley summed it up like this. I, think, I don't think we played clean enough football. I didn't think we made enough winning plays in the second half where everyone's performing their assignment, doing it with the right technique, with the right type of energy. I just think there was a lot of little things in the second half um, that added up to a, to a big result there. And, um, you know, we got to learn how to come together and, and, and close a team out like that in the playoffs. Um, because and after a second straight playoff game where Brandon Staley's inability to manage the game cost the season, the LA Chargers still reaffirmed their commitment to Staley. Now ahead of this season, LA's most significant move was signing Justin Herbert to a five-year $262.5 million contract extension. At the time, the deal made Herbert the highest paid quarterback ever based on average annual value. And with his salary increasing significantly in 2024, this was the last season the Chargers could build their roster while paying below market value for an elite quarterback. Justin Herbert has proved his value once again this season, placing in the top 10 in QBR, QB rating, passing yards, and touchdown passes. However, late game collapses are still happening. In week one, the Chargers blew a late fourth quarter lead to the Miami Dolphins, with the defense allowing a touchdown in each quarter. In week two, they led most of the game against the Tennessee Titans before having to rally and force overtime with a last second field goal. They got the ball to start overtime, but went three and out before giving up the game winning field goal and falling to 0-2. They rebounded with wins over the Vikings and Raiders before hitting their bye week at 2-2. Against the Dallas Cowboys in week six, they kept it close most of the game before allowing a late go-ahead field goal and throwing a game ceiling interception to lose by three. I was there watching it live and man, it was glorious. The Chargers would lose to the division rival Kansas City Chiefs before rebounding with back-to-back -back wins against the inept Chicago Bears and New York Jets. But then the old Chargers reared their heads again. In week 10, they played catch up all afternoon against the Detroit Lions as the defense failed to slow down the Detroit offense. The Lions ended up with the ball at the end of the game and ran the clock down before kicking the game-winning field goal to beat the Chargers 41-38. The significance of this game was that Justin Herbert and the Chargers were able to score a touchdown on each of their second-half drives, yet they still lost the game. And needless to say, Sunday's game in Green Bay was a big one for Staley and his team. Once again, they led for most of the game, and while they lost the lead late in the third, they scored the go-ahead touchdown with less than five and a half minutes to go. But the Packers responded immediately with a touchdown on the 
next drive. And thanks in part to a costly pass interference call against LA, the Chargers got nowhere on offense after that and they lost yet another three point game 23 to 20. After allowing Jordan Love, the starting quarterback with the lowest completion percentage in the entire NFL to have a career game with over 300 passing yards, Brandon Staley was asked about possibly relinquishing defensive play calling duties. And he responded by saying this. Confidence, like I I've told you, and like I've told you from the beginning, I have full confidence in our way of playing. Full confidence in myself as the play caller and the way that we teach and the way that we scheme. Full confidence in that. We got to bring this group together and do it consistently. Okay. And that's where it's at. So you can stop asking that question. Okay. I'm going to be calling the defenses. Okay. So we're clear. So you don't have to ask that again. When asked further about what the fans might think of their performance, Staley had this to say. I'm not here to talk to, to the fan base. I'm here to talk to my players, the locker room. I know that we give ourselves a chance to win every single week with the game plans that we have. Okay. okay. And we have done it here. You guys act like we've never played good defense. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. The loss dropped the Chargers to four and six, last place in the AFC West, and dealt them their fifth loss of three points or fewer this season. Seven overall, dating all the way back to last year. Brandon Staley came to the Chargers as a defensive specialist, but his defenses have been among the league's worst during his tenure. The Chargers have ranked 29th, 21st, and 23rd in defensive points, and 23rd, 20th, and 31st in defensive yards. It's felt like one step forward, two steps back, not because the team hasn't addressed Address that side of the ball. Only the Steelers are spending more money this season on defense than the Chargers. During Staley's first two seasons, the Chargers ranked sixth and fourth in defense spending. In fact, there's been plenty of Pro Bowl talent on the team since Brandon Staley took over. In his first season, they had six Pro Bowlers, including two on defense with five alternates. Last season, their only two Pro Bowlers were on defense with six alternates. Just look at the win probabilities for the games that Brandon Staley and the Chargers choked away. These games aren't all on the defense defense, but when there's been this many collapses during Staley's tenure, think that there might be some changes made on that side of the ball. Instead, Brandon Staley blamed his offensive coordinator and fired him after the Jaguars loss and has continued to call the defense. The Chargers have officially blown their opportunity to win while their star QB is on his rookie scale contract, let alone they weren't even close to begin with. While Joe Burrow has made it to multiple AFC championship games and at least has an appearance in the Super Bowl during his rookie scale contract, Justin Herbert has yet to get his first playoff win. The line between success and failure is razor thin in the NFL, and one loss can't necessarily tell you if the coach cost their team the game. But at a specific point, the results become undeniable, especially when there's so much talent on this roster. The evidence has shown that Brandon Staley's departure is the first step towards crowning the Chargers as a contender again. Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with all this. There's already a rumor suggesting that Bill Belichick might have an eye on Brandon Staley's job. I'll leave a link to that in the end screen and I'll see you guys there. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload. Microphone.